Hello, everyone. Tell me if you can hear me and if you can hear me extremely well. Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi. Extremely well, Margaret. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Emmanuel, Lorna. Hi, Karen. Thank you. We, we like extremely well, nothing less than perfect. Very well, okay. Every extremely well, excellent, very good. Uh, Anthony, hi, hello, Anna, hello. Natasha, hi. Great sound, excellent, Anita. Good. Hi, Bobby. Okay, so, we are at on part 55 and we have someone that is unmuted let's mute everyone okay here we go and we are on part 55 and, and uh, today is june 1st 2024 and we're about to start are you ready Yes, 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 excellent. Hi, Emmanuel. Okay, you are ready. Lorna, hi. Okay, Lisette, yes. Hi, Amber. Nice to see you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here we go. We are starting. Agreements, no recordings. Nothing I say today is true, unless, of course, it is true for you. The seminar has been designed to bring a shift in viewpoint. From effect to cause, from slow, unnoticeable decline to a powerful, never-ending climb. But the key to getting those results is participation. If you don't participate with each and every question I ask, you will not have the shift in viewpoint. If you do, my friend, you'll discover just how powerful you are and it is nothing you've ever imagined. If you're not in communication, if you just inhale information, you will suffocate. Here we go. Yes. Oops, yes. Okay, why does the snake have such an effect on you? Why does the snake have such a big, huge effect on you? We're talking about the relationship snake if you have not been here before. It is hidden, yes. Because you don't confront it, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it supplies justification for your sins. Okay, Margaret, it's something uh, negative that influences uh, you, but you can you can see it. Okay, very good, very good. Yes, I got it. It's Kent. Yeah, very good. Okay, because he or she already has uh, your trust and the poison is mixed with truth okay very good excellent so why is the venom so powerful why is it so powerful so we have the relationship snake it's a, a person that hidden from you by the way if you have if i say any words you do not fully understand ask me yes if i say snake and you don't know which snake i'm talking about ask me okay so what happened is like that this is person a and this is person b and everything, they have a relationship. Everything seems wonderful. They love each other. And then something goes wrong. A start to hate B, and B start to hate A. And the reason it happened is because there is a third person, this person C, that is a snake, is really scrolling. The snake is unknown, is under the ground. You don't see him. 
in the snake poison A on B, in the snake poison B in regards to A, and since he's doing it in such a way that you cannot recognize that he's doing it, and I will explain later how, you think A is sure that he doesn't like B, and B is sure that he has things against A. So even if you understand the mechanism, by the time it happens to you, you will not recognize it. You will fight and fight and fight, and the fight will not be solved because you will fight about what B did to you, but it's a lie. It's never what someone did to you. It's always what you did. And, um, and then uh, B will fight about what A did to him. And the mistake is that instead of looking for who, who said, you're looking at what was said. What was said is irrelevant. Do you understand the principle? I'm doing that for the new people, okay? For people that did not hear it before. <clears throat> for example, I'll give you a, a real life example, okay? So um, many years ago, Aviva was uh, pregnant and um, she was pregnant and um, I, I really, I, I thought that she looks the best, she's amazing. And I told her 50 billion times that she looks amazing. And, um, and we generally, we don't have any kind of fights, disagreements, things like that. We handle things by communication. Good things, bad things, we handle by communication. That's general, yes? Now, one day I'm sitting with her, with the family, and uh, it is uh, me, her, uh, at that time it was Gal, and she was pregnant with Hadar, and her mother was with us in the US. It's all happened in the US. And um, I'm telling Aviva, what, and we're in dinner, and I said, you have to eat this. And uh, she gave me the look. And you know, you, she doesn't have to say too much. I knew that something is extremely wrong. And he has the look. And you know, when and I ask her what's happening, and she said nothing. What's when a woman say nothing? It's mean everything. Yes. <laughs> so obviously, I just acknowledge her and say, okay, thank you. And and later on, I went to speak to her, and um, just, so I went to speak to her, and I'm we're going to the room, and I'm talking to her, and I say, hey, what, what's going on? And she says nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing? I mean, this is the biggest something in the universe. And she said, no, no, nothing. I said, come on, what? She said, you asking me to uh, eat uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you think secretly that I look bad, that I put on too much weight because I'm uh, pregnant, uh, and uh, you don't like me. I said, whoa, 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 who said that? Who said that? And she said, what do you mean, who said that? I said, who said that? She said, you. I said, when did I say it? Uh, no, you didn't say it, but you innuent it. No, I, how? No, no. Who said that to you? I did not. You can. You don't read my mind. Who said that? And she's like, no one. Da, da, da. And after a while, she said, my mom. I said, okay. What did your mom said? At that moment, things become real. And uh, before that, it was all insane. At that moment, it becomes sane. So. Um, so uh, I said, uh, okay, what did your mom say? And she said, my mom said that uh, you said that I look uh, very bad, that I'm uh, fat, that uh, I eat too much. Uh, so that's all your mother said. And yeah, and she, and she, and that, did she tell you that I said that? Uh, and uh, she said, she told me what, she, you know what, what you told her. <laughs> I said, okay, fine, let's call your mom. No, I don't want to involve her. No, no, I, I know, but let's call your mom. I don't want to involve her. I mean, yes, we will involve her because the truth will set you free. The truth, although thought, will set you free. There's nothing, I'm, I just want to put what's actually happened. Maybe I was uh, drunk, although I never drink. But I, I did not say anything like that. So I call uh, her mom, we call her to the room, and I say, Frida, what did I tell you about Aviva? I, she said, oh, you said that um, uh, the more she eats, the better she looks, and you love the way she looks, and you want her to eat 
healthy and more uh, because uh, she looks amazing because she, before she was uh, a bit uh, too thin. Now she looks even better than ever and she's shining. And I said, okay, good. So this is the totally opposite story. And I said to Aviva, how did you hear that? So I said, what's happened? So Frida said, ah, she was on the way out with the children. I started to tell her that you said that you eat by, and she didn't, that you eat a lot and she didn't hear the rest. She didn't hear the rest at all. And Aviva, and I asked Aviva, did you actually hear the rest? And she was looking, 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 and she said, no, but I heard that she say you ate a lot. And uh, somehow I re I thought that you said all the rest. Are you with me? Uh, this is like unbelievable. This is a real, real story. A usual couple will start to fight because they will talk about what you said and what you said before and what you said before. I didn't say what, I didn't care what was said. I cared who say that, who, who? I want to know who. It's really, really unbelievable. When the, there's a few laws that in actions here, one of the laws is that the moment that you start inventing data, the moment that you start inventing data, never mind why, you said probably at that, that moment you become not intelligent. Imagine your computer will start to invent data. Guess. You ask him two plus two and he will guess. This actually happened to me today and it was really painful, false accusation and the, the accuser wouldn't not let me bring the person who said it. I know, but this is how well, you need to learn this data, but how do you cause the other person to actually come up and how do you find who is the person, even if they don't tell you, etc. Yeah, your computer definitely invent data, Anna. So if you don't have data, you invent data, and the more data you invent, the less intelligent you become. Because at any given moment, you know everything. Any given moment, you know everything. So when she told me, I know I did not say it. And I know that the only reason that she will get it, that there is a third party that instigated this whole incident, and she did some stuff of her own. Yes. Great. Excellent. Are you with me? Do you understand the principle of that, of the snake? Yeah, this is gold. Yes. Yes, our brain designed to come up with answer. Any answer is, if, if it doesn't have one. Yes, exactly. Okay. So why is the venom is so powerful? And here is the answer. The reason why the snake has such powerful effect over you and the reason the venom is so deadly stems from two natural laws. A straight line is the shortest distance between two points. So if I look at the straight lines, if there are two points here, this is point A and point B, uh, this is not a straight line. So it's a long distance between two points. But the straight line is the shortest distance between two points. So far, so good? Great. Excellent. Good. Only one line can pass through a single point. So if you have a line, if you have a single point, there's only one line because the single point is composed of particles and a particle has a specific size. And let me let me make it a little bit thicker. Let's say this is the size of the um, of the um, uh, point. And uh, if I make my line thicker, uh, you'll see that only one line can pass through this thing. Okay? Are you with me? Excellent. Now. How would you define the word aberration? How would you define the, for, the word aberration? It's actually an English word. What does it mean? It's come actually from optics, from the area of, opti of optical technology. 
not normal, okay? Something that disturbs, something not straight, which looks fuzzy, not straight. Deviation from real, veering from a straight line. Yes, that's correct. The deviation from the expected course. Yes, Amit. Deviation from the expected course. Yes. This word is really an interesting word. Aberration means divergent from a straight line, normal or natural. So when you've got a divergent from a straight line, so you've got a straight line, you start in a straight line, and all of a sudden you start to go, wee, you, you just become insane. That's what that's aberration. So far, so good. You can say that same activities are straight. Whoops, that's very, that's unstraight. This is a, same activities are straight. An insane activity become insane because they don't go anymore from point A to point B. I tell you, this is point A and you intend to arrive to the hospital and you started to go towards the hospital and then there is a dog barking and you start to go to handle the dog. And then someone tell you that the dog has a disease. So you start to handle diseases of dogs. And then you find that the government fight, uh, promote the diseases of dogs. So you, got, you start to fight the government. You do all of these things, but your target was to get to the hospital because your son is in the car sick. So this is insane. That's insanity. Are you with me? Most people, most of the time, live their life in this way. You start to work, you, you, you are here, you start to work, you, you intend to do something. To do that, you need to open a, a, a browser to go to, let's say, your bank. But the browser takes you, whoa, there's something very interesting here. You, there's something very interesting here. Boo, there's something there. Oh, it reminds me of there. And you go like that, like that, like that, like that. And all of a sudden, you are here. And you say, okay, fine. So let me go back to find out what I was doing if you are somehow insane. And most of the time you start a new cycle B, never completing A. Are you with me? That's aberration. That's what you need to learn how to handle. Okay, so you need to learn how to, to handle it. This is really, really something very, very important. We will learn this thing. Aberration. Aberration is the opposite of straight. Wandering from what is expected, resulting in, abnormal, in, in abnormality. So every time that you see something that is not normal, the normal thing is, um, I, it is me, I tell Aviva something, she acknowledges it and everything is beautiful. That's normal. But I tell Aviva something, she give me something totally different, the look, insanity, drop the communication. If I'm insane, I will answer her about something totally different. You've done it also. And she will tell me something totally different. And we will keep on fighting because it's not a straight line. And I know what's the straight line. The straight line is, I ask you a question or I said something you acknowledge that if you don't, I don't argue with you. I just say, okay, I understand. I understand you. I end the cycle. So there's no insanity anymore. And then I go and ask who, not why. Are you with me? Okay. So wandering from what is expected, resulting in abnormality. Every time you see abnormality, every time you see insanity, you know the person is aberrated. Added unnoticeable change that manifests in noticeable abnormality. So someone added up a unnoticeable uh, change. So for example, uh, this is uh, you, okay? And uh, you committed the sin. It's a very unnoticeable change because you justify it and you hide it. It's unnoticeable to you because you justify it. Of course, he deserved it or he did it first. 
or I didn't mean to hurt you. I only meant to steal your money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like there is something that you've done that you justify, yes? And then, so there's an unnoticeable change, yes? But bring abnormality. What's the abnormality from now on? Number one, people cannot communicate with you. And more important, you cannot communicate with, the pe with people. You become stupid. You act without data. You don't have data. When you've done that, the next thing that will happen, you will start to invent data. And you see people sitting, not, don't knowing anything, and they invent data from the river to the sea. Which river and which sea? Are you with me? They just invent data. So when people act stupidly, you need to know that there was unnoticeable change. They've done something. They didn't notice that it's bad. They did notice that uh, that manifests in a, a noticeable abnormality. So someone uh, installed my uh, something on my uh, geyser for me yesterday. So there are two geysers, okay? And there are two controllers, okay? That control the temperature. The, he didn't notice because he's asleep. He connected the thermostat for this one to unit to this unit to unit A, but the control, the electricity, he connected from unit B. So unit B con gave electricity all the time to here, regardless of the what's happening with the thermostat. And then the thermostat from unit A connected to B. So unit A, so uh, unit A gave electricity to this uh, geyser all the time and if and for him he saw the geyser working he didn't he's not he there was an unnoticeable change that brings to noticeable abnormal an uh, abnormality because what will happen if i would not be there i when he finished i came down i was in the webinar of yesterday i came down and i looked and i said hey that do not make sense and because the temperature here keep, kept on going up and this temperature kept on going up. It will never turn off because both temperature going up and they're going up and they're going up and they're going up. And uh, what will happen is that uh, the moment that this, and each one of those uh, uh, gizzards work separately. So this one work at a certain hours of the time and this one work in another hour of time. So when this is cold, this is warming. And when this is, uh, so this temperature goes up and up and up and up. And this one stay cold because this thing would never start because it thinks that it's high enough. And if I was not there, it will explode. Are you with me? And 200 liter geyser that explode in a garage makes a lot of damage to very expensive cars. And if there's a person there, that person is dead. Yes, a noticeable change that manifests in noticeable abnormality. Yes. This is what happened to most people most of the time. They look at things and they have no idea what's happening because they, they created so many of those things that they are sure that they know why. They don't see anything, but they invent every single data about everything. Whatever you talk to a person, you tell you, oh, this probably happened. You tell him, well, he didn't show up to work. Probably what happened is that. What he tells you, that person have a lot, a lot of sins that cause him to become very, 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 like amazingly uh, blind. And the only thing he can do is invent data, even when he deals with something that is just data. Are you with me? This is really crazy. Adding lies that result in the departure from truth. It's aberration. Adding lies. Every time that you add a lie, never mind how big, never mind how small, and lie means a change of the original. There's no such thing as white lie, black lie, uh, yellow, green lie. Lie is a lie. Lie is a change of the original. 
Everyone happy with this definition? Lie is a change from the original, any change. Yes? Deviation of rays from a single focus point due to external factors. So you've got a ray. So this is a focus point. This is a, something that come, okay? Um, this is a focus point that the ray's been shot at or um, sent. And if there is a deviation, if those uh, uh, rays do not arrive to the, ex to the expected result, or if those rays do not go towards the expected result, somehow they've been deviated, this is aberration. Are you with me? Deflection from the intended focal point. So when someone tell you something, this is person A and this is person B, he tells you something and you did not duplicate it 100%, you deflected duplication. This is aberration. Every time you did not fully understand, you got an aberration. And every time I, let's say I was the originator, did not create full understanding, I brought about a deviation. So if I tell you something, I tell you aberration, and you did not understand. You sit in this webinar, and this webinar is super valuable for you, but you did not participate. You didn't tell me, Mayor, I don't understand what, what um, deviation is, or I don't understand what... Um, Aberration is you, you just hear a word and you feel too embarrassed to ask what happened from my viewpoint. I caused damage to you. I caused aberration because this very small, unnoticeable change would bring about noticeable disaster. And from your viewpoint, because you did not understand, you will invent data. Even if it's temporary, you will invent data which will mess, which will mess you up. Do you understand how deadly it is? It's crazy. So I'm insisting on you have to participate. You have to participate. You have to participate. And um, most of you really are very good at that because I've been drilling you for a long time. But uh, you're very welcome. Yes, Karen. Uh, Yes, every single word you need, to, you're right, Margaret. So most of you are very, very good of that. You've been with me for a while, you know, I'm drilling you on that, but you get here even a more deeper understanding of what's happening. A misunderstood word caused you to invent data. It's really unbelievable because when there's no data, you will invent data. And because you invented the data, it will be more true for you than the real definition of the word. And now you have a mess in your mind. Now you have aberration. You understand? You trust yourself more than any dictionary. So if you invent the definition, wonderful, that's it. It's really powerful. You really have to ask every word, every word, everything you don't understand, ask, just ask. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make you less. The only thing that makes you less is aberration. Aberration happened because you failed to ask. Other determined change. Every time someone come and force you to change, uh, which means every time you do something that you don't want to do. So if you act on what you want, so let's say I, this is you and this is the target. If you've been in yesterday's lesson, you know that uh, what you should, how you should act. You say, okay, this is my target. What needs to be done? What needs to be done is what I want. This is the ideal. What most people do, they say, um, this is what I want. The hell with the target, with the target, and this is what I'm going to do. So you are slave to what you want instead of bringing about the expected target. Do you understand the principle, yes? Ah, yes, I'm drawing, sorry, yes. So, okay, let, let me do that again. <clears throat> let me do that again. 
So you've got two options. Option number one, that this is you, and this is your target, okay? And you say, I want to achieve the target, and you ask, because you know what is the target, you will know what to do. This is what needs to be done. And what needs to be done, you make yourself want it. This is what you want. You make yourself want it. It's not what you want, and so you go to the target. You make yourself want. No problem, Anna. I know. So far, so good. Everyone with me? Excellent. Now, on the other hand, you have another person, the useless person. The useless person say, I want something. And he do, 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 do what he wants, regardless of what the actual target is. So he never gets anything accomplished in life. He gets only what he doesn't want. He gets aberration. When you act based on what you want, you get aberration. When you, get, when you act based on what's needed, you get success. Most of the people act most of the time based on what they want. Can you see that? Super powerful, yes. Yes, that is extremely powerful. Yes. So you act based on what is needed, not based on what you want. A change due to the combined effect of external forces. So there are all kinds of external forces. You are weak. You don't have knowledge. Weak mean only don't have knowledge. This is really, most people think uh, you are weak because you don't have muscles or you are weak. No, you are weak because you don't have knowledge. Knowledge bring about power. It actually brings control. And every time that you control something, you prove to yourself that you have power. You go to the gym, you pick up 10 kilo. Okay, you prove to yourself 10. Then you pick up 15 kilo. Okay, you prove to yourself 15, which means you got knowledge. Oh, now I've learned how to pick up 20 kilo. Good, I control 20 kilo. I have more power, more, 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 more. So it changed due to a to combine an effect of external forces. And this change happen only because of lack of knowledge. If you are weak, it means you don't have knowledge. As society improve and got more and more knowledge, mankind become more and more powerful. The dinosaurs uh, were extremely powerful, but with no knowledge. So they are extinct. Are you with me? Excellent. For anything to become aberrated, a third force, visible or not, must operate on the line. So for anything to become not ideal, there is a third force that operating that you are unwilling to confront or to handle. So if you act stupidly there is a third force there is a third force this is a, this is your body this is your mind and this is you now you act stupidly aberrated you act stupidly aberrated yes why because there is a third force that operating on you that you are unaware of your mind Third force, the third force is third force. It can be something else. You go straight and someone shoot you, you fall. In relationships, when the relationship gets destroyed, the third force is a person. Everyone with me? If you understand the principles, you will see that you will not be the adverse effect of the mechanism. If you fully understand the principles, you will not become the adverse effect of the mechanism. Okay? Okay, perfect. So far, 
we have looked at the physical universe. This is what's happening in the physical universe. Everyone agree that this is a physical universe explanation I gave you so far. This is what's happening with forces, energy, uh, mind. This is all physical universe, okay? Now, do you agree that everything that you can observe in the physical universe has been created by the spirit? Yes. Do you agree that every single physical thing used to be an idea? Idea is, is not physical. Everything in the physical universe used to be an idea. Just look at this datum for a second. That everything in the physical universe used to be an idea. It's just unbelievable, which means anything you want has to start with an idea. But you think that ideas are not real. Why can it not be the self-serving or unwillingness of an individual sometimes, something from them that make them weak? Because the individual, you mean the spirit, the spirit is perfect. And the spirit can bring something out of nothing. So if the spirit don't bring the ideal, if the spirit act aberrated, is because there is an external force. You cannot do anything bad. Okay. So we said that uh, everything in the physical universe started with started with an idea. Anything that you that you can ob observe has been created by the spirit because the spirit created by putting an idea plus intention. So if this is the beginning, this is time, this is the spiritual universe, and this is the physical universe, uh, the spirit uh, bring about things in the physical universe by putting an idea plus intention. It brings it into the physical universe. And then assuming a viewpoint, you assume a viewpoint, which means you, ad you adhere to the laws of the universe you operate in. And in our universe, the, view the laws is for every plus, there must be a minus. And you take this idea plus intention, which is a, a, a spiritual particle in the physical universe and nothingness in the somethingness. And what you do, you bring about nothing to something. You separate it. And the end result is plus and minus. Two particles. Are you with me? Now you have something. Something is anything that composed of twos. Okay? So. Excellent. So, if you will observe, if you will observe, you will find that there is such a thing as human geometry. Human geometry. Okay? And I'm going to teach you what does it mean. But before I, I will explain human geometry, how would you define the word good? What does it mean to be good? Something positive, okay. Positive to who? To the hunted or to, hunt, or to the hunter? A person who does no harm. So a person that sees someone killing a million people and say, no, no harm. I'm not going to kill Hitler. No, it's not good. We don't want to see dead people. <clears throat> yes. Promoting survival on any of the dynamics, okay? To serve as many dynamics as possible, yes. To do something for the greater good, that's true. Good is a viewpoint. What kind of a viewpoint? Clean hand, everything is a viewpoint. Whatever is best for all dynamics, okay, good. Good intention with pro-survival results. So you cannot define the word good with the word good in it. Because if I don't know what the word good, I want to define it. So I say, what is the word chaka chuka? Chaka chuka is chaka chuka intention with pro-survival results. Uh, doing what's right for people, animals and things. That's good. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. 
better results for more number of people. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a different viewpoint, not much. Good. The word good means the clear absence of aberration. Are you with me? You're going towards the target. The, car, the target is defined. You going, not the physical universe, you, you cannot, you as the spirit cannot do bad. For as long as you don't allow third forces uh, affecting your going towards the target, you cannot do anything else but good. Cannot. Bad come from the intervention of a third party. You without a third party, without a third force, are incapable of doing bad. You without your mind cannot do bad. You without a third force cannot do bad. Bad is the manifestation of the presence of third force operating on you. That's why I say you are perfect and anything that is not perfect is not you. I can read, rephrase it by saying you are perfect and anything that is not perfect is another external force that operating on you or on your actions. Are you with me? Quite amazing. Undamaged, good is undamaged, having, having undergone no change, deterioration or damage, which means that the only thing that is unchanged is the spiritual thing. Yes. That's a relief, yes, Margaret. So the spirit is the only thing that is unchanged, yes? Uh, spiritual things are cannot be changed. When someone works with energy, he's not spiritual. He's energetical. <laughs> because energy is a physical thing. So you cannot be physical and say I'm spiritual, yes? If you work with energy, you, you work with the physical universe. It's not a problem. But you need to realize that you work with the physical universe, not you're not working with it's, you're not bringing something out of nothing, you're changing something. The third force, the third force can be anything external, anything external. It can be someone, and you missed a lot, yes, uh, Mitch, you came about uh, probably half an hour into the uh, webinars, but it's an external influence. Someone that told you something, someone that pushed some kind of a physical force, some third force, okay? So undamaged, having undergone no change, deterioration or damage. Okay? So good mean unchanged. If you change someone, if I change you, I damaged you. That's why you need to be source of what I'm teaching you. If I teach you something and you parrot what I said, I damaged you even if what I said is true. I actually damage you. You have to make what I teach you your own because otherwise I bring about aberration because you just stare at me. Look at any cult and you see that there are some cults that have beautiful ideas, smart, unbelievable, but the members are totally stupid. Amazing, Andy. You have to make it your own. Because if not, I changed you. It's an external force. And you're already perfect. So if I changed you, obviously I created the damage because you are already perfect. I can help you to remove fake reality so you become you. What does it mean become you? You become the source. You will know. What is you? You are the thing that knows. Are you with me? You are the things that know. Anyone that changes you, anyone that forces you not to be source, anyone that says, uh, this person is smarter than you, you need to listen to him. <laughs> no, no, no. Even if it's true that he's smarter than you, 
And even if that guy will give you something really good, if he doesn't insist that you will become so over it, you just become a parrot. Good, Anita. You just become a parrot. You just become useless, a monkey. A useless monkey, but a monkey. Are you with me? Now, the derivation of the word uh, uh, good is quite amazing. It's come from the word unite. What does it mean, unite? So unite means that once you become you again, you will be able to take the physical universe and connect it back together. You'll be able to see the plus and the minus. You'll be at the moment of creation, or the, co the moment of causation, sorry. Are you with me? Justice and ethics forced on you. Why does it uh, affect you so much? Because, uh, because of earlier incidents, but we will talk about it at some other time. So you got that. The, the, good, the word good mean that you can see all viewpoints. Actually, you can define the word good as the result of having the freedom of viewpoints. The moment that you have to be right, the moment that there is one side right and one side wrong, um, what you have, you don't have the freedom of viewpoint because you want to be right and you despise wrong. So you don't have the freedom of viewpoint, so you will not be able to do good because you will see only the hunted and not the hunter, uh, hunter. or you'll see only the hunter, but not the hunted. Are you with me? Is that the Latin derivation? Uh, it actually comes from Germanic source. Yes, that's if you open the dictionary, it's come from Germanic source. Okay, so far so good. It's quite amazing, it's quite amazing. The law is for two people to have a good relationship, the connecting lines between them must be straight, unaberrated. There must not be any force that will aberrate the line, that will cause the line to go away. The, the communication must arrive. There must be duplication. So for as long as the connecting lines between two people is straight, the relationship will be good, unaberrated, undamaged, united. And they will act as two unite spirits. Means there's no lies, 100%. You cannot have lies in a relationship. So basically what, what it says here, what I say here, is that uh, this is person A and this is person B. For as long as the line is straight, you see that one of the definition, when the line is totally straight, there is no line. Are you with me? When the line is straight, there is no line. Thank you, Tuluna. Yes. Yes, Marcel. So when the line is really straight, there is no line. The straightest line is a dot. Are you with me? Because for a line to continue, there must be minute derivations. You don't see it, but if I will put a zoom on it, there must be something like that. Because if there is no minute derivation, this whole thing will become one dot. So you will share the same space. Yes, yeah? so if, if the line is really unaberrated, you will share the same space. What do you mean there is no line? Okay. I will explain uh, what do I mean there is no line. It's a good question. So let's say that this is a line, okay? What is the line? A line is combination of dots. Agree or not? Because this time, agree or not? This is incredible, yes. Everyone agree with that, yes? Now, because there, is a, because there are dots, the line cannot be 100% straight. If you take any line, regardless of how straight it is, if you take any line and you put it under a microscope, 
you'll see that once you put it under a microscope, what you see is dots that go like that. Okay? And the more you straighten the line, so you've got a dot here and one dot here, which means there's distance between them and a dot here and a dot here and a dot here. If I will straighten the line, what will happen? I will connect. I will put here the dot here. I'll put here a dot here. I'll put here a dot here. And you'll see that I will close the distance. So the more accurate it will be, the less distance will be between the lines, between the dots, sorry. So the straightest line is no line at all. It's sharing the same space. Because any distance, any distance is some kind of an aberration. Any distance is some kind of an aberration, small. So the closer you get, you'll see in relationship, you've got person A and person B. And they, at the beginning, they meet each other and they have a relationship and they're wonderful. Everything is wonderful because the line, you welcome Amber. So because the line is like they're sharing the same space. This is by the way, the defini my definition of the word love is the urge to share the same space for no reason at all. Now, person B go overseas for three months. They're going for job. I don't know. Let's say I have a job in China. So I go now to a job. There's a distance. Because there's a distance, the line is not as straight anymore. Yes, the line is actually not as straight just because of the distance. And you will see because the line, because a person going away and the line is not straight, immediately the communication is not as good as when you've been together. And you don't really understand each other. True or false? So the the distance, the distance bring about aberration. Distance bring about aberration. You want it or you don't want it, it will happen. Unless, of course, you know how to handle it, yes? So distance bring about aberration. What does it mean, aberration? Departure of a straight line. What is the least amount of aberration? What is the most good? Is a mother love to her child. The urge to share the same space for no reason at all. This is love, yes? You want to share the same space with this person for no reason at all. If there is a reason, you have a business deal. I'm with you for your money. I'm with you because you look good. I'm with you because you make me feel. Are you with me? Totally different viewpoint, yes? So, for as long as the connection, the connecting line between two people is straight, which means there's no aberration, no lies, which means it's good, yes? The relationship will be good, unaberrated, undamaged, united, and they will act as two united spirits. You've got two people, and uh, those two people um, uh, have a relationship. They started a relationship, and um, the relationship uh, uh, is, let's say, this is two people, and they started a relationship, and they love each other. Everything is wonderful, okay? And now, uh, what happened, uh, they lie. Because they lie, they, they cannot communicate it, yes? So they cannot share the same space. They have to create a distance because they cannot communicate, yes? I cannot tell you I cheated you. Let's say I'm going out uh, with uh, Margaret. Margaret is my wife and I cheated Margaret. I have to create a distance because I cannot communicate it. Because I cannot communicate it, I stop the communication. The line is not straight anymore. It's, ooh, I cannot, it's cut. I cannot communicate that. Because I cannot communicate that, obviously, uh, I would not understand Margaret. Obviously, she will be wrong as far as I'm concerned. So when you find someone wrong, when you say that someone is not as beautiful, is not as amazing, is when you find something wrong with someone, what you know, you are aberrated. You've done something wrong. 
the, the line is not straight. Are you with me? So two people to have good relationship, the connecting line between them must be straight, unaberrated, which means no lies, no change, undamaged, good. Just had a huge win. Uh, just had a huge win. And I truly understand why there is uh, so much tension between my father and I. Just understanding this has uh, brought me huge relief, amazing. It has taken a weight off my shoulders, wow. Back and neck, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this teaching. You are very, very, very welcome. Okay, so everyone with me, yes? Wow, yes, it is wow, it's unbelievable. Excellent. So what is the factor that defines how easy it is to operate the line? What is the factor that defines how easy it is to operate the line? What's define how, how much you force you need to operate the line? No idea, okay. Don't know. One lie, okay. Lies, dirt, but how, how much? What's like, what's the factor that define how, how much lies do you need? Seven lies, one lie, big lie, small lie, white, black, yellow, maybe Chinese lie. One, okay. Stop admiring, yes, just one lie. 50% force, 50% intelligent, okay, one lie. Doesn't matter the number. Okay. Actually, there's only one factor. Okay. In the beginning, you will say what? But the moment that you will agree, the degree of operation is directly proportional to the lie. It's good. Good. Misunderstood words. Yes. Okay. The shorter the line, the harder it is to operate the line. Let me explain. If I have a line that is very long, anything that I put here will will cause the line to bend, yes? Or I, I can actually draw it in a different way. If this is the line, anything that I will put here will cause it very easily to bend. But if the line is very, very close, almost a dot, a dot cannot be bent. Are you with me? So when you are very far apart, when people are far apart, it will be any, any feather, anything will aberrate the line. So you can call this distance, the, the distance between the two points, you can call this thing affinity, yes? So when the affinity is high, which means the distance is short, the aberration is almost impossible. When the affinity is low, which means the distance is high, the, the aberration is almost in, inevitable. Are you with me? So short means one dot, two dot is not a short, three dot is not a short, four dot, is, everything is relative, yes? But the shortest line is a dot. So the bigger the distance, the bigger the line, the longer the line, the bigger the aberration. You'll see that in a, on a very long line, the aberration is like that. If you take a microscope, on in a dot, there is no aberration at all. And in a short line, the, the distance is very small. It is the distance in kilometers, like a long distance relationship. Uh, yes, it, the distance in kilometers, distance by putting uh, uh, lies, something that takes two beings, two spirits, and get them the consideration of physical distance. Physical distance can be that two people are in the same bed, but they have so many lies, so many things that they hide, that the distance, the actual distance is kilometers between them, between the spirits. So the bodies are really close. Or it can be that the distance of the body is so far that immediately, because the distance is, is of the body is far, like just because they are far away, the communication is not so good. There is no duplication. You don't actually have all your senses to duplicate the other person. And so that you don't really understand the other side. You don't really understand the other side. And what you get is upsets. And what you get is aberration. You will act like not you. You will do, you will commit sins that usually you will not do because you do not know why. You don't understand 
how to fix this thing. You don't know how to fix this thing. Because even if you're very close physically, the bodies are one next to each other, you have two bodies. This is one body and this is another body. Yeah, let me do that. This is one body and this is another body. Okay? And uh, they're in love. They're sharing the same space. Wonderful. Now, how this thing, how this love stop? Thank you, Amber. So how this thing stop? The moment that I lie, let's say I'm the red one, I lied to my girlfriend once, small white lie. She asked me, how do you do? And I say, okay, but actually it's not. Uh, do you think I look okay? And I think no. And I don't say it, I don't communicate it. The, uh, she tells me, did you do that? And you say, yes, I will. Or you didn't answer. And it's not important the size of the lie. The moment that I put a lie here, what I've done is I put an actual barrier here. Actual barrier. Now I put another lie and I put another barrier. Now the body can be exactly at the same spot, yes? The body can be at the same spot, the, but the distance is defined by the number of barriers in my mind because those barriers is the, in my mind. I communicate to you through my mind and I communicate to you when the small barriers from here, let me do that one second, oops. The small barriers I communicate to you from here, bigger barrier I communicate for you from here, bigger barrier from here so the more you have the the more past you have the worse your relationship will be because what's create the actual distance is not just the physical distance physical distance is one thing that add to that but you can be sleeping with each other having sex but if you have this past lies you are very far apart and you will see that there's a magic that happened when the magic of love is gone. And that magic is that two people can be together, but apart. So what separates you from another person is how many lies you are holding to. Yes? So the shorter the line, the harder it is to aberrate the line. What does it mean? This is a long line of lies. If you learn how to remove those lies, if you learn how to remove those lies, let's say that I teach you how to remove those lies. You remove those lies, you remove those lies, you remove those lies, you will see that you will start to love everyone around. And not, it's, it, the manifestation is love, but what's important is you will start to become sane. And your result all over the universe would be unbelievable. Nothing would stop you. Nothing will stop you. And the truth, the thought will shall set you free. Are you with me? And the problem is that the, the lies are so hidden. It's a hidden force that aberrated the line. It's hidden. It's in your mind. It's things that you're hiding. It's a third person that you don't see. Are you with me? Yes. We definitely need to learn how to remove those lies and I'm going to teach you how to remove those lies. Definitely. This is just an introduction just for you to really even understand that it's not that the other person is bad and it's not that you are bad. You just didn't know. You just didn't know. So you come up with wrong ideas. You feel, oh, I'm so bad. I'm so unethical. I'm, I'm really acting, the, the, the out ethics in my life is terrible. I'm so unethical. Out meaning not proper. And ethical means uh, not doing what I agreed to do in my group. Okay, so just let me just explain for a second this word ethical and so on. So, so you can say that um, a, a moral uh, is the ability, so a person is a, a moral, uh, is the ability to see right from wrong and act from that viewpoint, okay? 
the ability to see right from wrong and act from that viewpoint. Everyone agree with this uh, definition? Right as opposed to good. Good is some is the uh, clear definition, uh, clear absence of aberration. This is right. Good means the the action that bring the greatest survival to the greatest number of people or things. Yes. So moral is the ability to see right from wrong and act from that viewpoint. Okay. Now, moral code is when you have a group, a group defined as number of people with a common purpose. And when you have a group, they have a certain sets of behavior that they found that over time, if they behave like that, the group survive better. For example, criminals learned that if you don't tell the police, it's better. They survive better. This is the moral code. So moral code is a set of behaviors that you've learned that the group learned that it helps the group to survive. For example, uh, a group um, uh, in, um, I don't know, uh, in uh, Africa learned that the best thing for them to do that if someone um, steal, they cut his hand. That's the moral code because they found that if they don't cut the hand of that person, they don't survive as well. Okay. Uh, we learn as a, we um, Western people learn, have a, a moral code that if they see a crime, they report it to the police. Yes, yeah, sleeping around is wonderful in the swinger groups because that's the moral code of the group. But if you go to a swinger group and you say, no, I'm not sleeping with anyone other than with my wife, then they will think that you're not ethical. Are you with me? That you, you're violating the moral code of the group. Now, what does it mean ethical? Ethical is when you join a group, what you actually do, you take on yourself the moral code of the group. And for as long as you behave according to the moral code of the group, you are ethical. Are you with me? So if I'm with you in a relationship and we agree that we don't cheat each other, if I cheat you, I violate the moral code of our group. And at that moment, I become out ethics which mean not ethical. So far, so good? My ethics is out, is not in, it's not proper. Okay? Now, justice is what the group do in order to force you to put this ethics in again. So this is out and they want to push it back in. So they want you to actually don't do this thing outside of the moral group. And the justice is force that the group apply to you to, to take on back the moral code of the group. Injustice is action that has been done once you are already ethical. So let's say this thing either is already in because of force or you decided or it was never out. But if the group still apply force on you uh, to force you to bring your ethics in, to correct your ethics, which means to keep the moral code of the group, but the moral code is already in. The moment that they put one iota, one joule more of energy on you, at that moment, this thing becomes injustice. So the purpose of justice is to put ethics in. But because man is really insane, they use justice in order to invalidate and to hurt another person. Are you with me? Yes, Anthony. Okay, good. So everyone with me, yes? You are all in agreement, no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Luciana. Excellent. So, the longer the distance between the two points, the higher the chances for aberration. Thank you, Lona. So basically, this is you, and this is the other person. I'm, I'm drawing it as a body, but actually you is the spirit. And you have your past, and he has his past. And that's what defines the distance between you. Are you with me? So the distance is defined by the size of your past on the subject. 
the more you rely on your past, the more crazy you are, the less love you'll be able to have. Even if the bodies will be really one on top of each other, you are having physical sex, the distance is there. Are you with me? So the longer the distance, so our job is to remove any third force that uh, bring distance and the third force, uh, a third person that uh, this is the person number C and person number C here that give you sh dirt and give her dirt, what they do, they're just making this thing longer. They make this thing longer. Are you with me? So any external force, any external force on the line will aberrate the line. So someone come to talk to you about someone else, your, your answer should be, um, the only way that I will uh, listen to what you have to say about this person, if this person is with me. And he said, no, I just want to, to help you. I understand. So tell me, I'm going to tell him what you said. No, don't tell him it's a line. So don't, don't tell me. I don't want to, to hide. Are you with me? So someone come and tell you, look, 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 I'm going to tell you something in confidence. Don't tell the person that I, don't tell anyone I told you. Say, don't thank you very much. I don't want that. Don't want, it's a lie. I know it's a lie because otherwise you will not hide it. If you feel that you need to hide it, it's a sin, it's a lie. What you're hiding only sins. Did you see a person that hide the truth like uh, good things? No, only sins you're hiding. So if there is an urge to hide, it is a sin. So if someone come to you and tell you, well, don't tell a, a, I don't know, mayor that I said that, you need to be smart enough and know the guy is a liar. He wants to damage you. He wants to damage you. He, he dress like a saint, but he's a snake. He has venom for you, not good. He has aberration for you, not good. And if he tells you something, you're brave enough and you call the person and you say, Hoy, listen, he told me that. Frida, my, uh, my um, uh, Aviva's uh, mother, Frida, come here. Aviva said that. What, what actually happened? Ah, all of a sudden we find the truth. Either that there is something really innocent, like what happened with Aviva's mother, or the person will tell you, well, but Johnny told me that. So you call Johnny. Johnny, did you say that? And uh, Johnny will say, uh, no, I didn't. So some one of you is lying. Well, we already know that we're dealing here with lies. And you'll find that Johnny usually invented something that never been here. Are you with me or never been there? You need to be smart. You need to be smart by knowing the mechanism you will be senior to the mechanism. Of course, there is a lot more to learn how to handle it, how to spot, but first of all, just understanding the mechanism. Now, what would be the result of a perfectly straight line? It is truly powerful, I agree. What would be the result of a perfectly straight line? Love, affinity, yes. Mm -hmm. What else? ARC, ARC stands for affinity, reality, and communication, yes. Duplication, yes. A great relationship, yes. Duplication, clean communication, that's very true. Yes. Yes. So, a great line, a, a, a totally straight, perfectly straight line, good relationship, a perfectly straight line means no line at all full duplication or love. So for as long as you don't have full duplication, if you don't understand, you don't love. If you don't understand, if you allow yourself to go past something you did not fully understand, you bring about aberration. You listen to a webinar that you don't fully understand, not 20% understand, 90%, 70%. If you have things you don't understand and you're not brave enough, to ask, the end result will be damaging for you, even if the webinar is gold covered with diamonds. Your life deteriorate because you agreed 
not to understand. You agreed to become aberrated. An invitation to commit a sin, yes. Problem is when you don't know when it happens, how does one spot the invitation before it's too late uh, to prevent uh, the aberration? So how do you know? It's first of all, uh, uh, you see, I don't understand. That's number one. Number two, someone there's, uh, there's, it's one-sided. Someone tell you about something else, or so there's an external force. So what you need to do is find the source. Who? 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 And we will learn much more about it, yes? I'm giving you now just the principles. Perfect duplications, duplication means no line. When the line is straight, unaberrated, the duplication is perfect. In the case of a relationship, when the connecting line is straight, the relationship, the marriage, the partnership, the friendship is pure and so connect like gauge blocks. Everyone knows what gauge blocks are? It's something that I've explained in the beginning. Everyone knows what, anyone don't know what is a gauge block? Anyone do not know what a gauge block is? It will take me two seconds to explain if you don't know. Okay, everyone knows. Okay. Okay, I don't know. Okay, good. Let me explain what is a gauge block. It will take exactly two seconds. Okay, here we go. These are two pieces of metal. They aren't magnetic and they don't have any adhesives of any kind on them. The surfaces are smooth and they don't have any noticeable grooves. I can touch them together and they don't stick. However, if I slide them together like this, they stick together like super magnets. They are clearly stuck together and I can't even pull them apart. If I twist them apart, they'll go back to being separate pieces of non-magnetic metal. What's happening? Well, these are actually gauge blocks, which are blocks of smooth metal that are precisely manufactured to be certain lengths so machinists can calibrate their machines and measurement tools. The extremely smooth surfaces are why they stick together. Properly rung gauge blocks can hold 75 foot-pounds of force before coming apart, and this actually is useful so machinists can combine gauge blocks of different lengths to essentially make more gauge blocks of many more lengths than they already have. They generally use the biggest ones they have so they can achieve the desired length without the small tolerances adding up. Okay, so gauge blocks basically is like a relationship. The cleaner the surface, the more they stick together. So when the line is straight, when it's clean, when there is no external force that break the connection between the gauge block, all of a sudden you see that for as long as there is no dirt, they stick together. Why they don't? Why they just stick together? He pose them in a certain way because when you push them in a certain way, you push away all the last pieces of dirt, and he turn them around. The last small small pieces of dirt are pushed away by the physical force. And what you get is total cleanness and they stick, they stick together. And a third force must, for, must separate them. Without an external force, they will never be separated. Like relationship, you take two things together and without an external force that will separate them, not, they will never break. Why is that the spirit often does not notice the extreme force being applied on it? Because the spirit is nothing. The spirit do not. A notice force. Are you with me? And what happened is that the spirit can no force but not notice, and but because the spirit committed the sin of accepting a lie. Once you commit the sin, you you lose the um, the ability to know. Okay, so far is everyone with me? You lose your ability to know by committing a sin. And why you commit a sin is quite amazing. You will not believe me. Why, why a person will commit a sin? If the spirit is perfect, if you are perfect, let's, let's say this is you, you are perfect. How come you all of a sudden commit a sin? Don't you think it's weird? Why will you commit a sin? 
why a perfect thing will commit the first sin? How come? Something do not make sense. Something do not add up, no? To add something and not hurt someone. But why? You are perfect. You cannot hurt anyone. You have nothing to hide. Why will you hide? Because you don't think you are perfect. But you know you are perfect. The spirit is this thing that knows. Something doesn't add up, no? <clears throat> there must be an external force that convinces you. That's very smart, Anthony. To cut corners. Why will you want to cut corners when you are perfect? You could just say, let it be and it is. Let it be light and there is light. Bring something out of nothing. Okay, so it goes like that. I will not go into it too much, but I'll give you just the idea, okay? So what happened is quite amazing. You're perfect, okay? Now, what happened is you have some kind of a misunderstood word or symbol. I will explain to you in the future what is the first misunderstood symbol. So you've got some kind of a misunderstood. You passed a symbol or a word you did not fully understand, yes? That brought about confusion. If, you, if I tell you, bring the chaka chuka to kakuka, you have confusion. I will explain later what is this thing, this first misunderstood. It's really amazing. Because of the confusion, you, by mistake, unwittingly commit a sin. Now, you know you don't want to commit sins, yes? So what you do, you cut your power. You cut your power, so you become blind, so you will continue to commit sins. So you see, if you start to eat one piece of chocolate, you eat the whole box. If you start to lie, you will lie all your life. If you start to do drugs, you will continue with drugs. It will be difficult for you to stop. You, once you start to commit sins, to justify the earlier sin, to explain the earlier sin, you commit another similar sin. So one sin will cause the next sin. And then there's all kinds of side effects and mechanism that make a sin not a sin. But the basic idea is misunderstood word will cause you to commit a sin. This is why I'm forced, I'm like forcing you. Look, you really, really have to understand that you need to participate. You need to say when you don't understand. You need to make it your own. What does it mean to make it your own? You don't rely on this, you rely on this. This thing knows, this thing understands. Or actually misunderstand. It's a deterioration. That's why I'm telling you, you have to, you have to, you have to understand every word. You don't understand, ask. It's important. Make it your own. Make it your own. You have to be source. Because otherwise, even if I teach you 50 good things, wonderful, beautiful, amazing, unbelievable, those sins will destroy your life. You went past one misunderstood world and I created more damage than you can come. This is why most people that teach you actually, you go to webinars, go to webinars, go to seminars, and you feel great and amazing and empowered and unbelievable and da 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 da, and your life will get destroyed. How come? Because they gave you so much misunderstood words and make you an effect, not cause. You understand? You feel good, not because you created the good, because someone made you feel good and not good. You need to be source. I know, Emmanuel, you don't believe, but I promise you that's how it works. And as we will continue, you will see. Yes. Thank you, Taluna. Yes, thank you. That's super powerful, yes. Misunderstood words is what makes a person stupid. Because you commit sins, you, you're blind, you understand? You, you're confused, you're blind, you cannot see. You have misunderstood words, you don't duplicate. The line becomes longer, you cannot duplicate. There is an external force that operates on you. This thing is an external force, it's not you anymore. You're very welcome, yes. Can you give an example of misunderstood word create sin? Yes. Uh, so you have a, a child and the, the child has been told you have to behave good. You, you heard the bird says, uh, 
you you have to be, have good people. You, all of you heard. Oh, you have to be good child, good child, good child. The problem is they never define good child. So what is a good child? One day, good child is a child that talk to mommy. The next day, she, you talk, but she say you're talking too much. So good child become bad child. So now you have a misunderstood word. You are you have a confusion. You don't know what to do. So you go and you you don't understand what's going on. You are in the past, you're stuck in the past. You're not actually looking. So you commit the sin unwittingly, you break something. Now, because you break something, now the person come and say, to them, your mother come and say, look what you've done, how bad you are. Now you think, whoa, I'm bad. But she give me attention. So let's be, let's break it again. And now you go into the cycle of committing sins. Are you with me? And this is very surface explanation that the actual exact knowledge is much, much more specific and measured. It is all measured. It's not something that I just say, I can actually show you how to physically measure it. Okay. So, in the case of a relationship, when the connecting line is straight, the relationship, the marriage, the partnership, the friendship is pure and so connects like gauge blocks. But how would you, how would the line be aberrated? For a line to be aberrated, a third force must aberrate the line. It has to be external because you are perfect. The only reason a line will be aberrated is a third force. The connecting spirit cannot aberrate the line. So me and you cannot aberrate the line. It's never me and you. But when we have a problem, we blame each other. So when you have a problem that do not get solved, you are trying to solve the wrong problem. You really have to learn that. This is a massive idea. If you have a problem that do not get solved, you really need to know 100% that you're trying to solve the wrong problem. You have two people fighting. They blame each other. The problem not, not getting solved, the problem be get, uh, getting bigger. Obviously, they're trying to solve the wrong problem. They don't see the third person here that actually fueling the fight. They fight and they fight and they fight and they kill and do, do, do. And you have all the idiots around that saying he's wrong. And then there's another idiot from the other side that say he's wrong. But the more you say he's wrong, but you don't solve anything, you're an idiot, yet yeah? Useful idiot, but idiot. And everyone has an opinion and everyone, what they do, those opinions just make the line even more aberrated. They think that they're helping, but they destroy. These people think that they're helping, but they destroy because they're stupid. They will do the opposite. Stupidity is doing an action that brings the opposite of the expected results. Are you with me? So the only reason a line will be aberrated is the third force. It, this, but you think that A is false and B thinks that A is wrong and A thinks that B is the source of the problem and the problem grows. You try to resolve the wrong problem. So any problem in your life that you have that do not get resolved, any problem of long duration that you have is a problem that secretly or not secretly, uh, overtly or covertly, you have the wrong why for the problem, the wrong source for the problem. Everyone with me? This is a massive concept, massive concept. It can take you out of any problem in your life because you have a problem, you see it's, uh, uh, it's not being resolved. Okay, I know I'm, I'm solving the wrong problem. Let me start to look. At least I know that I don't know because before that you were sure he's to blame, I know. The, how do we solve for the real problem is uh, 
we will learn it. I'm not teaching everything right now. I'm just showing you at the moment the principle. Just by the fact that you know that you're trying to solve the wrong problem, immediately you will improve. Because you will be to that degree exterior to the problem. The, on, the, the, the only thing that you need in order to resolve a problem is to become a little bit exterior to the problem, a little bit senior to the problem. So when you have two people fighting and they blame each other the wrong way, you are not senior to the problem. You are part of the problem. But when you know, I know it is not the problem. It's not what he did against me. I know that for sure. I feel differently, but I know. No is much higher than feel. So I know. So immediately I become cause over the problem. And it's enough that I will be a little bit cause over the problem. And you will see that everything will change. It's true for money, for business. It's true for anything. It's true for anything. Any money problem that you try to solve and they don't get solved, you're trying to solve the wrong problem. You have overtly or covertly a source for the problem that it's not the actual source. This is super, super, extremely important. Now, what would be the end result of aberration? What would be the end result of aberration? End result of aberration, affinity? You like people that are insane? Failure, death, not good. Distance, not, not affinity. Oh, good, no problem. Deterioration and destruction, okay, very good. The end result of aberration is force disconnecting, disconnection. So the, the basic tendency is when people have a problem, they say, this guy is bad. So I need to leave him. I need to disconnect. Now, they don't say that he's bad. They come up with some kind of a nice explanation. They find the word the most don't, don't understand. For example, they know, they heard about the latest uh, fashion in uh, words that mean someone bad. And they say he's a narcissist. Now, the word sounds so good, so it's totally uh, explained why they need to disconnect. And everyone becomes narcissist against them, but the problem stayed. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's so stupid because the problem has not been solved. What happened? You have two people. This is person A, and this is person B. And person A decided that person B is a narcissist. So I need to cut the communication. Okay. So now when you cut communication, I cut the communication. Do I have better control over B or less control? Less control, of course. Yes. If I'm not in communication with the car, the car will have an accident. Okay. Now, 20 years later, every time I mention any kind of thing with relationship, you tell me, ah, yes, Bill did it to me, which means you carry Bill with you on your back all this time. All this time. You carry this guy on your back all the time. Because you didn't solve the problem. You are now all the time aware of narcissists. So what, what you look for, you don't look at the person as he is, you look, is he a narcissist? It's external force that change what you look. You don't look for people, you look for, is he a narcissist? You are afraid, what does it mean afraid? Afraid means unable to observe or unwilling to observe. Is it, uh, fear is a state of imperception. Fear is mean I'm blind. So if you're afraid of narcissists, you didn't solve that problem. You have this guy here on your back that tell you, oh, people are bad. Be careful, be careful, be careful. So you are careful. You are not alive. You're trying not to die. You are aberrated. You be, it's forced disconnection, not only from that person, but you've been disconnected from life. Because you are now in a protection mode. You are disconnected from life, not only from that person. Are you with me? So if you don't learn how to handle the snake, if you don't learn how to recognize this thing, if you don't learn how to remove the sins, if you don't learn how to remove this mind, this thing that distances you from life, you're not alive. 
your body is eating, sleeping, and maybe doing some other things, but you are not alive. You're trying not to die. Big difference. You are coward because you are always afraid of the narcissist, of the bad people, of the cabal, of the this. You, you're just afraid. You are not alive. You are not alive. You are an effect. Do you understand the difference? So what would be the end result of aberration? Disconnection from life. You are not alive when you are aberrated. And it's always forced. Why do I say that it's always forced? Why do I say that it's always forced? Since aberration is never based on your self-determinism, someone push you around. Someone push you around, someone push you. And you are just stupid not to recognize it and to handle it. External force lies. And hence, any relationship deterioration is due to an external force. It's never what you think it is. It looks it's A, it's never A, because the relationship didn't solve. And people telling me, no, but you know, but sometimes people are narcissists and I need to stop to, re to, to remove them from my life. And yeah, not a problem. You remove them from your life and you remove everyone from your life and you stay alone. Wonderful. How is your life doing so far? Not so good. If you ask them, okay, so how is your life now? And they say, if, you, if they are truthful, yes, because usually they say, oh, now that he's gone, my life is amazing. Seriously. Tell me how your life going without lying. And if you actually get them to look, and they will not be so happy. Yes, good one. Are you with me? Everyone with me? It's a totally different viewpoint. From effect to cause, from slow, unnoticeable decline to a never ending climb. This is what happens once you actually understand this knowledge. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, next week, we will have, of course, another lesson. It's still free. I'm going to uh, keep uh, this uh, series uh, free because I really uh, know that uh, this knowledge is help to mankind. People need to know that. If you have people that uh, you care about, make sure they come and join the webinar. Uh, it's not important if they join in the middle. I always explain again and again and again. And if I see new people on the webinar, I will have no problem to quickly explain the, the basics of what we already went through uh, again and again and again. And of course, they can see, they can watch the, the replays. Um, what I ask from you in return as an exchange for me giving you all of this knowledge for free, totally free, is to follow, uh, uh, follow me on Instagram, at Mayor Ezra Official. Uh, I will write it uh, on the chat. So follow me on Instagram and share wins. Share wins. Okay? Share your wins and uh, tag me on Instagram. This is your exchange with me. This is how you pay me for me giving you all of these things for free. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so I will, uh, next week on Tuesday, we have uh, the at 11 o'clock p.m. an interview with Gal. And on Friday, we will have the um, a business class. If you are part of the business class, if you are not, you should join. And uh, Saturday, the next uh, Advanced Relationship and Family Academy. Okay, that's all. I love you, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye. And no inner circle this week. We had last week. Okay, love you. Ah, and Karen, thank you. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for helping and doing all the admin at the background.
I'm really sorry you are. You are so, so amazing and incredible and, um, and caring and loving. And you melt my heart every time I'm thinking about you in communication with you or not. I love you. I love you. I love you. Okay, bye-bye.